Hello, today we are going to learn about fibrous protein. There are various fibrous protein like collagen, elastin, proteoglycan and so on. We are going to discuss about collagen today. Collagen is an important part of extracellular matrix in our body. This extracellular matrix usually surrounds the cell it provides mechanical support to the cell. It controls the flow of nutrients and the signals to the cells. And this extracellular matrix, the whole, consists of two types of protein or two types of material that is fibrous and the non fibrous. <coughs> fibrous contain collagen, elastin, fibronectin, and laminin, while the non fibrous part made up of proteoglycans and polysaccharides. Today we are going to discuss about collagen. Collagen is a fibrous protein that serves structural function in the body. So when we classify that one of the important structural protein in our body is collagen. It is found as a components of skin, connective tissues, blood vessel wall, and the sclera and the cornea of the eye. So collagen is very very important part of our body as a structural element. Like if we talk about the fibrous protein, they exhibit special mechanical properties resulting from its unique structure. And it is obtained by specific amino acid sequence into a regular sequence with secondary structural element while the globular proteins whose shapes are the result of complex interactions between secondary tertiary and sometimes the quaternary structural element so this is the basic difference between the fibrous protein and the globular protein fibrous protein usually have a secondary structural element while the globular proteins have a complex structure involving secondary, tertiary and the quaternary structures. As we have discussed, like collagen is the most abundant protein in the human body. It is a long rigid structure having three polypeptide chain that is alpha chains and they are wound up around one another in a rope like manner. So, because of this structure, it is provide a tensile strength to the supporting tissues. You can see here, like this a collagen at a three chain here. Okay, they are wound up around one another in a rope like manner. And because of that, it's a very long and rigid structure. Although it's the most abundant protein and it's found almost throughout the bodies, but depending upon the particular organ, the collagen plays different structural role depending upon its type and organization. For example, collagen present as a gel so it is dispersed as a gel and support to the structure such as in extracellular matrix or the vitreous humor of the eye in other tissues like in tendon the collagen fibers they arranged parallelly in the cornea of eye they are stacked they are arranged in a stacked manner so transmitting the light with minimum scattering or the collagen of bone that occurs as a fiber and arrange at at particular angle to each other and resist the mechanical shearing from any direction so you can see depending upon the type of tissues the collagen plays a different role depending upon the structure of collagen. Now we see the types of collagen. There are more than 25 
types of collagen or collagen like proteins found they are having three polypeptide alpha chains which are held together by hydrogen bonds between these chains variation in this polypeptide chains amino acid sequence gives structural component that are about of the same size that means the produces the collagen fiber of the same size approx 1000 amino acid long but with slightly different properties so this collagen different 25 types of collagen present in our body they have various amino acid sequence in alpha chain and because of this variation they produce slightly different or they are having slightly different properties from each other you can see here the mainly this uh, collagen fibers there are varieties of collagen fibers the mainly are fibril forming network forming or fibril associated out of that type 1 fibril forming tissue this, this uh, collagen fiber seen in skin bone tendon blood vessels cornea type 2 is commonly seen in the vitreous body and the cartilages type 3 in the blood vessels and the fetal skin the network forming it is a very much important for the basement membrane so type 4 collagen it is very much important or very frequently asked which type of collagen usually seen in the basement membrane that is type 4 that is network forming collagen type 7 that is found again it's almost similar to the like basement membrane beneath the stratified squamous epithelia this fibril associated collagen that is 9 seen in the cartilages and the 12 seen in the tendon ligaments and some other tissues okay so here you can see the structure of collagen this is collagen molecule so you can see this is collagen molecule it is arranged like three you can see there are three different polypeptide chains they are wound up around each other it forms like this quartered staggered appearance okay <clears throat> and on staining it says the bands like this and wherever there is a light staining region it is showing the gap between these collagen fibers and this is the electron microscopic view of collagen fibers or collagen fibrils now we see the structures of collagen <clears throat> first amino acid sequence obviously collagen is a protein made up of different three polypeptide chains and let's see they are made up of which amino acids so the collagen is structurally rich in proline and glycine this is important in the formation of triple standard helical structure the proline as we know it's an it is also known as amino acid having imidazole ring it facilitates the formation of helical conformation because of its ring structure and it gives kink in the peptide chain so it makes a groove in the peptide while the glycine it is the smallest amino acid as we know it is found in every third position of the polypeptide chain and it fits into the restricted space or what we can see we have seen that it the proline makes a crew so this glycine fits into that restricted space where the three chains of the helix comes together so as i told you the glycine is every third amino acid the structure is like glycine x y glycine x y where x is frequently proline and the y is often hydroxyproline or hydroxy lysine so it's something like this glycine then leucine hydroxyproline then again glycine then proline hydroxyproline every third is glycine alanine hydroxy lysine so the every polypeptide chain is something like this in which every third amino acid 
is glycine and apart from that there is usually proline hydroxyproline hydroxylysine as i told you in the beginning it's a triple helical structure like the most globular protein they are usually folded into a compact structure like immunoglobin uh, hemoglobin okay so they are a compact and the folded structure why the collagen is a fibrous protein has an elongated triple helical structure that places many of its amino acid side chain on the surface of the triple helical molecule so when it forms a long helical structure at that time the r group that that goes outside and it hanging outside of the collagen fiber <clears throat> what is the importance of that this allows the bond formation between the exposed r group of the neighboring collagen monomers and this is resulting in aggregation into long fiber so the r group or the side chain of one collagen fiber get attached or makes a bond with the r group of the neighboring collagen fibers and in such a way it forms a long fiber aggregates then in the structure third thing is hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine <clears throat> as we have discussed that collagen contains uh, glycine proline lysine apart from that it also contains non standard amino acid that is hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine which are not present in most other proteins why it is non standard because we have 20 standard amino acids and two new ones so total 22 amino acid this hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine they are non standard because they does not contain a genetic code to translate into this amino acid <coughs> This non-standard amino acid that result from the hydroxylation of some of the proline and the lysine residues. Not all the proline and lysine of collagen, but a few of the proline and lysine residues as a part of post-translational modification. So once post-translational means after the translation. Translation means protein synthesis. So once the protein is synthesized and there certain certain modifications occur that is called post translational modification so such modification in collagen is hydroxylation of few proline and few lysine residues and the importance of this is this hydroxyproline stabilizing the triple helical structure of collagen and it maximizes the interchain hydrogen bond formation. This is the importance of hydroxylation reactions of <coughs> collagen fiber and proline and lysine in collagen. So this is the reaction, something like this. This is the proline molecule. This is the collagen chain. It get hydroxylated. Hydroxylation means addition of OH group. So this proline is hydroxylated and make a converter into hydroxyproline with the help of prolyl hydroxylase the same lysine hydroxylated with the help of lysyl hydroxylase here the important thing is for the conversion of proline to hydroxyproline what we require is ascorbate that is ascorbic acid and it is also known as vitamin c so it is very important to have vitamin C for the hydroxylation of proline and lysine. The fourth thing is glycosylation. The hydroxyl group of the hydroxylysine residues of collagen glycosylated enzymatically means the carbohydrate group will be added on the hydroxyl group of hydroxylysine and this carbohydrate usually glucose and galactose <clears throat> they are attached to the polypeptide chain prior to triple helix formation okay so this is glycosylation so we have seen four things in the structure one is the amino acid sequence that is usually glycine is every third amino acid apart from that that is a proline lysine 
second in the structure we have seen it is a triple helical structure third thing we have seen this proline and lysine they are hydroxylated so we have hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine in the collagen structure and this hydroxylation occurs in the presence of vitamin c ascorbic acid and the fourth thing is glycosylation this hydroxylysine is glycosylated means the carbohydrate group in the form of glucose or galactose will be added onto this hydroxylysine residues now we are going to learn about biosynthesis of collagen this collagen molecules they are formed in fibroblast or in the osteoblast of bone and chondroblast of cartilages and then secreted into the extracellular matrix after enzymic modification the mature collagen monomers the aggregates together and become cross linked collagen fibrils so we'll see one by one steps of collagen synthesis so as i told you this collagen synthesis occur this collagen synthesis occurs in the fibroblast and then it will be secreted to the extracellular matrix and then there will be some post translational modification occurs in that collagen fibrils and they will aggregate to form collagen fibrils so we'll see the steps that occurs inside the fibroblast that is formation of pre pro alpha collagen so the collagen is initially synthesized in the form of pre pro collagen the pre pro alpha collagen chain is formed by the ribosomes on rough endoplasmic reticulum and the formation and as we know that the synthesis of protein from the messenger rna that process is known as translation so the pre pro alpha collagen is formed by the process of translation this newly formed chain has a glycine xy glycine xy glycine xy sequence as we have discussed in the structure of collagen as every third amino acid is glycine and the xy represents either hydroxyproline or hydroxylysine okay as i told you in the ribosome at the rough endoplasmic reticulum of fibroblast the pre pro alpha collagen chain is synthesized here you can see the glycine xy glycine with these other ribosomes on the endoplasmic reticulum they have started synthesizing a pre pro alpha chain now after that the next step that is a splitting of signal peptidase so once the pre pro alpha chain is synthesized then there will be a cutting of few or the removal of certain amino acids that is called signal peptides and from that pre pro alpha chain you can see here this is a, a long chain is synthesized and there is a cutting that is called splitting of signal peptidase and resulting in there is a pro alpha chain formation okay so this is the step the next step the polypeptide chain synthesized that is in the form of glycine xy glycine xy that undergoes the hydroxylation that is also occurs in the rough endoplasmic reticulum the purpose of hydroxylation is addition of hydroxyl group in the pro alpha chain to proline and lysine with the help of prolyl and lysyl hydroxylase in the presence of vitamin c that act as a cofactor this what is the purpose of this hydroxylation because of this hydroxylation there is increased number of hydro hydrogen bonds between the alpha chains and the more hydrogen bond there is a more strength of to that newly formed triple helical collagen and this triple helix form by the three alpha chain is called pro collagen now here the important thing you can see in the this figure that this in rough endoplasmic reticulum the hydroxyl group is added in the form, in the presence of vitamin c so here you can see the stray hydroxylated stay strong with vitamin c and the lysyl and prolyl hydroxylase 
rich lemonade so by this way you can remember that vitamin c and water that is hydroxyl group provide strength to the collagen fibers now in the step 3 the hydroxylated pro alpha chains make hydrogen bond and disulfide bond and forms a triple helical structure the three alpha chains they are joined together by hydroxylated uh, proline and lysine by the hydrogen bond and along with that there will be a disulfide bond in the step 4 there is a glycosylation out of that some the lysine molecules that is a uh, hydroxylated already out of that few will get carbohydrate molecule that is either glucose and galactose that will be added to the newly formed triple helical structure you can see in the fibroblast there is a rough endoplasmic reticulum the chain is synthesized the triple helical structure is formed after that it goes to the golgi apparatus and you can see the job is done that is glucose and galactose is added to that collagen molecules to that the hydroxy lysine molecules and it make a the triple helical structure more strong after that once the process of glycosylation is completed this uh, collagen molecules will be secreted out to the extra cellular matrix by the process of exocytosis okay so you can see by the exocytosis the triple helical structure is secreted to the extra cellular space now till now we have seen that in the fibroblast on the rough endoplasmic reticulum ribosomes form a pre pro alpha chain on that alpha chain the proline and lysine will be hydroxylated after that there is a triple helical structure formation and that triple helical structure formation will glycosylated the glucose and galactose will be added to that amino acid and once this occurs it will be secreted out of the fibroblast in the form of pro collagen in extracellular matrix after that in extracellular matrix there is a proteolytic process occurs proteolytic means there is a removal of a carboxyl terminal amino few amino acid as well as few amino acid from the n terminal that is nh2 group side few amino acid will be released so this resulting in conversion of soluble pro collagen to insoluble tropo collagen so this is the again a one more post translational modification that is proteolytic processing in the process of collagen synthesis the next step is cross linking here the lysyl oxidase will form a cross link between the neighboring collagen fibrils because of that the pro collagen will converted into tropo collagen and this tropo collagen you can see there is a lysyl oxidase it forms a cross linking between the neighboring collagen fibers and for this lysyl oxidase we require copper as a cofactor and because of this what the collagen fiber is synthesized have a very strong not can say it have very good tensile strength any mutation that interfere with the process this cross linking process will resulting in poor stability of the collagen fibers we discussed previously any mutation or defect in the cross linking during collagen synthesis affect stability of the collagen so there is a commonly asked that vitamin c deficiency leads to scurvy and we know in scurvy there is a increased bleeding tendencies in the case of vitamin c deficiency it affects the hydroxylation of proline and lysine 
this hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine they are responsible for the cross linking and this cross linking provides tensile strength to the collagen fibers but because of poor cross linking there is a decreased tensile strength of assembled fibers so usually patients with the vitamin c deficiency shows bruise on the limbs as a result of subcutaneous extravasation of blood it is because of increased capillary fragility so in the exam there is a routinely asked justification that vitamin c deficiency or ascorbic acid deficiency leads to scurvy or increased bleeding tendency here you can see the picture of the patient suffering from the scurvy this is the petechial hemorrhages or this is the bruises due to poor collagen formation and subcutaneous extravasation of blood now this is the summarization of collagen synthesis here it starts with the synthesis of pre pro alpha chain or this is a pro alpha chain there is a removal of peptide then there will be pro alpha chain formation then there will be hydroxylation after hydroxylation there will be a addition of carbohydrate group that is glucose and galactose that is glycosylation then there will be assembly of three alpha chains resulting in pro collagen that will be secreted to the extra cellular matrix in secretory vesicles after that there will be removal of uh, peptides from the c terminal and n terminal and forms a pro collagen and again that will be a course cross linking between this collagen fibers and it forms a collagen fibril in this image you can see the how cross linking occurs this is lysine residues of collagen fiber that converted into a lysyl residues by the lysyl oxidase this a lysyl residues of one collagen chain form a cross linking with the lysine residues of the second collagen chain and in this way there will be a cross linking between two neighboring collagen chains and that collagen that that cross linking between the collagen fibers it provides proper tensile strength now degradation of collagen so normally the collagen are highly stable molecules having half life as long as of several months however the connective tissues in the dynamic and in is dynamic and is constantly being remodeled often in response to growth or injury of the tissue this collagen fibrils they are broken down by proteolytic action of collagenase enzyme which are the part of large family of matrix metalloproteinases the type 1 collagen the cleavage size is very specific at a 3 quarter and the 1 quarter length fragments and after that these fragments will be further degraded with the help of matrix proteinases to their constituent amino acids till now we have seen the structure of collagen and how the collagen fibers are synthesized now we discuss the diseases associated with the collagen there is a very long list of diseases there are diseases due to mutation so sub types of osteogenesis imperfecta ehler danlos syndrome alport syndrome the certain arterial aneurysm you can see in all the conditions the different different types of collagen are affected like ulrich muscular dystrophy certain chondrodysplasias and nist dysplasia as we have seen this collagen disease they are mostly due to mutations defect in any one of the steps of collagen fiber synthesis due to certain genetic defect resulting in inability of collagen formation or collagen fiber formation properly that provide tissue with the needed tensile strength normally provided by the collagen so whatever the particular 
strength has to be provided by that collagen will not be possible in case of defect during the synthesis now there are more than 1000 mutations have been identified in different 22 genes that coding for 12 of the collagen types the following are the examples of disease we are going to discuss now that are result of defective collagen the first one is osteogenesis imperfecta the disease is also known as a brittle bone syndrome it is a heterozygous group of inherited disorders distinct by bone that easily bend and fracture it also resulting in retarded wound healing and a rotated and twisted pine that is a humped back appearance there are that is a very common feature of you can see here this is a photograph or x-ray picture of a fetus it's showing in vitro fractures you can see here there is a fracture of long bone all long bones are fractured in steel bone fetus so the bones are very weak and they're fractured even during the process of labor there are different types of osteogenesis imperfecta type 1 it is also known as osteogenesis imperfecta tarda it is present in early infancy fractures are usually secondary to minor trauma and may be suspected if prenatal ultrasound detects bowing or the fractures of long bone type 2 osteogenesis imperfecta is called osteogenesis imperfecta congenita it is a more severe usually fetus die in utero or in the neonatal period due to pulmonary hypoplasia most patients with the severe osteogenesis imperfecta have mutation in the gene for either pro 1 or pro 2 alpha chain of type 1 collagen. The most common mutation seen in osteogenesis imperfecta is substitution of single amino acid in which a simple glycine is replaced by bulkier side chain amino acid at every third amino acid in the collagen fiber the structurally abnormal pro alpha chain prevents the folding of the protein into a triple helical conformation resulting in poor collagen you can see here error danlos syndrome the patient with the error danlos syndrome the normal for the normal person this is not possible it is for what we can say is joint hypermobility and skin extensibility and also there is a tissue fragility there are six major forms all of which result from defective collagen formation there is a classical ehler danlos syndrome that is defect in pro alpha 1 or pro alpha 2 chain of collagen type 5 in many but not all families it is the autosomal dominant disorder hypermobility heller danlos syndrome the defect is unknown but it is an autosomal dominant condition vascular eds in which there is structural defect of pro alpha 1 chain of collagen type 3 encoded by col 3a1 gene this is important for mcq point of view a neat exam this mcq has been already asked that which gene defect leads to vascular error danlos syndrome that is called col3a1 gene it is again an autosomal dominant condition kyphoscoliosis it is due to deficiency of lysyl hydroxylase a collagen modifying enzyme it is an autosomal recessive condition arthrochalasia that is deficient processing of n terminal and of pro alpha 1 and pro alpha 2 chain of collagen type 1 it is again an autosomal dominant condition dermatosparaxis that is deficiency of pro collagen 1 n terminal peptidase and it is an autosomal recessive
there are other abnormalities in the collagen due to collagen defect the one is the homocysteinuria as you know homocysteine is considered as a cholesterol of new era this accumulated homocysteine due to hyperhomocysteinemia that react with lysyl aldehyde to block cross linking resulting in skeletal deformities vascular and ocular defect there is a deficiency of ascorbic acid in collagen synthesis as we have already discussed that leads to defective hydroxylation of collagen it leads to poor wound healing and increased fragility of blood vessels and causes the scurvy the lathyrism due to ingestion of lathyrus sativa uh, that is also known as a kesari dal it contains a toxic agent that is beta oxalyl amino alanine and this chemical inhibits the lysyl oxidase and resulting in poor collagen formations so this all are the abnormalities in collagen formation these are the references that i have used for the lectures you can go through that for the more detailed study so thank you this is all about collagen i will soon up upload second video that is uh, elastin which is also a part of fibrous protein so you just go through the details and read it properly for more updates you can follow insta account that is at the red bar chemistry for student you can like share and subscribe this channel for more updates thank you